if you could go back, is there anything that you would want to change? Any event that happened to you or anything? The first time I drank alcohol. It's the worst drug in people have said the that. world. Everybody goes on about heroin, cocaine, uh, weed, whatever, alcohol. So Richard, thanks for speaking to us first of all. That's okay, uh, thank you for coming and talk to me. You more already. I want to ask you, Richard, him. Yeah, go on. Um, how old are you first of all? I'll be 60 in November, so, okay, so you're 60. I always round it up. I don't like being like 59. And uh, how long have you been homeless for? Uh, coming up to six years now. Six years? Okay. Yeah. Richard, tell us, how did all this happen? How did you become homeless? Uh, failed second marriage, depression, too much alcohol, um, and just depression. And that's basically what led you to being homeless? Being homeless. And also, I go up and down Essex, I move around, uh, but that's mainly it, really. What area did you grow up in? Just down the road, Ilford. Oh, so you're local. Yeah, Ilford, yeah. And um, you know when you, because of depression, you end up homeless, so practically what was it? Is it that you couldn't uh, work, you couldn't pay your rent, your wife kicked you out, what happened? No, my wife, me and my wife split up. Yeah. And um, thank you, Janet, if you're listening. <laughs> um, and we sold the house, made a nice profit, and she yeah. walked off with the whole lot. Uh, a lot of money and that led to like I said the depression alcoholism and uh, I lost my job where were you working before on the railways okay how long were you working with them for quite a, quite a few a years time, yeah? yeah and do you have any kids yeah I've got a son how old is he he's 27. 27 when was the last time you met him or spoke to him oh, about two years ago um, <clears throat> he um, obviously does not want to see me like this so but uh, he knows Oh yeah, he knows um, I'm around and that. He's uh, he's 27 and he's got a 12-year-old uh, so child. Granddad, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Our granddad. And uh, your ex, does she know you're homeless as well? Probably not. She's. I think she went to see her daughter in Australia oh. from the first marriage. I know it gets a bit complicated. Okay. And what about your like wider? friends and family network do they know your situation yeah I was in the Royal Air Force for 12 years um, and they've been good to me uh, my ex squadron uh, comrades yeah uh, David Bishop if you're in there um, so they've been good to me over the years a long time ago but they've helped me out with um, not, not just money but just friendship uh, other things. And you know, when, this is your first time being homeless, isn't it, for these six years that you've been homeless for? Have you been homeless in the past? No, I haven't. Never no, no. How was that first day when you actually ended up on the streets? Uh, rough. I didn't know. <clears throat> I was very naive. Yeah. Um, it was uh, in South End on sea in Essex. And um, luckily I bumped into a couple of people. Uh, Adam Bates, who's RIP now. Uh, who helped me okay. uh, because I was very naive. I mean, you can hear I'm not streetwise, you know, I'm not, I don't speak the lingo, you know, yeah. oh, drop me out, yeah. drop me out, I swear down, and all that old <laughs> nonsense. Um, no, it's not nonsense, but anyway, they helped me out, so luckily I bumped into some good people. And where did you sleep on that first night, do you remember? Yeah, the, the beach, South End on Sea, the, be the actual beach. Okay, on the actual beach. Yeah, seagulls were like over me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, before you became homeless, what type of um, hobbies did you have? What were you into, like? Well, golf, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. your thing, yeah? Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, golf and, uh, <clears throat> here we go, record collecting. Record collecting? Yeah, do you remember those? Yeah, top yeah, oh, one. bless you, my love, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. What happened with your collection? I sold it, of course. Um, yeah, I had, uh, you know, 12 inch, LPs and that, nice. yeah. When I, was the last time you played golf then? Is it? Well, it's got to be 20 years ago, 15, 15 years ago. Okay. And um, where do you currently sleep? Over there, the, 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 the multi-storey car park, yeah. So you've been sleeping there for a while now, hasn't it? Uh, since January this year. And you know, uh, I see you sitting outside here, Asda, for quite a while now. Yeah. How are the people normally towards you? Are they okay? Ah, they're, they're okay, yeah. I always say, <clears throat> for every 
idiot, I call them idiots, they go past and say something horrible or do something, they're, out, they're outnumbered by 10 good people. Oh, amazing. That's no, great. they are. They're outnumbered. They can't win, the people. You know, I get comments and that. They can't win. Okay. For the kindness of strangers. Uh, how about the staff? At, are you allowed in the ESDA? Uh, not at the moment. No? What happened? <clears throat> they thought I was too good looking. <laughs> what do you think happened? <laughs> that's, that's, that's sad, man. Uh, so well, uh, no, no, it's my anything, fault. You can't even go in there. You probably need to send someone in there anyways. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. All right, no <laughs> and uh, what do you miss the most from before? Companionship. Say that again, companionship. Companionship. It's, you know, I'm, I'm coming, like I said, I'm coming up to 60. And I know a lot of people on the streets and that. <clears throat> uh, and they know that they can sleep beside me. Nothing silly's going to happen. You know, I'm not going to jump their bones or anything. And they wake up with me. And it's brilliant. Because I hate that, being alone all the time. So that's quite, that's quite tough. I miss companionship. Do you know what? I'd love a dog. You would love a dog? Yeah. Four legged. But and then I wouldn't be able to get into uh, hostels and that, so uh, you know, just companion. It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, that with is. With the dog, they don't let you in as well. No, so. they don't let you into any hostels or anything, no. But um, yeah, I love a dog. Proper dog, though, not one of those blimmin' <laughs> the what they call handbag <laughs> things, chihuahuas or whatever they're called. And what do you find to be the toughest part about being homeless? I, I know you said companion. Is there anything else apart from that? Uh, <clears throat> no, no, not a lot really. You get used to anything. Is it? After a while, you know, like I say I've been doing this five or six years, and you get used to anything. You can do without a job, mortgage, cars, paying council tax. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, money, you can. It takes a long time mentally, but you can do it. So you know, food-wise, is it food-wise because of people that you get to eat? Yeah, look, 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 there's food from everyone. Yeah, look, look, I've got this man today. Right? That's nice, nice, nice yeah. man. Yeah, I've got this and today. That's just people, you know, Coming up to me, yeah, because <clears throat> I can talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I and, can talk. Uh, you know, going coming from a lifestyle where you had a job, you had a property, yeah. to ending up homeless, what was the tip, most toughest thing for you to transition? Like, what was the biggest challenge for you? Well, at first, um, well, the usual things like lack of money, uh, but like I said before, you can do without, but the only problem is your whole world shrinks to this. In other words, you can't travel unless you do something illegal, like yeah. jump the trains. Hello, Essex Police, if you're watching this. Um, <clears throat> you can't, your whole world shrinks to this, to like one mile, because, you know, unless you can get about. Uh, and then where you sleep, is there like a sleeping bag or a tent? What, what you got? No, I mean, no, I've got, um, here we go. That. That's that, yeah. That's what I've got. <clears throat> so, um, this is comfortable. But, um, like I say, you can put up with the cold and the heat. It's the rain. That's, that's really not good. So when it does rain, how do people, um, how do you, like, what do you do in the rain? Do you go back to your place? Do you still stay here? Because uh, obviously well, you need money for survivors also. Yeah, but, um, no, but you, you just walk around with your clothes still wet. Uh, after a day or two, you know, because these are the only clothes I've got. Um, most people like, don't give me clothes. And you know when it comes to like uh, going to the toilet or having a shower, what would you do? Well, there are, um, not so much around here, but in Essex, there are uh, places you can go where you can get a shower. Um, <clears throat> one of the better ones is Harp. I don't okay. know if you've ever heard of Harp. Uh, okay, they're a homeless charity. But don't get me started about homeless charities. Is it? They're, not, they're, not, they're not charities. If you pay somebody a salary, they're not a charity, right? And they have their own agendas. The Salvation Army. Okay. How, they're massive, aren't they? Yeah. They're big. The CEO 
the bloke who's in charge, how many millions he gets paid. All right, I know it's worldwide. Yeah. They do nothing for me. Absolutely what nothing. What about charities like Street Link and St. Mungo's? Have they come approach? St. Mungo's don't exist anymore. Is it? Not in Essex, they're gone. Okay. Uh, family Mosaic, I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Yeah, right, okay. They're turned into Peabody now, that's what they're called. If you don't get paid benefits, like I don't get paid, yeah. they don't want to know because they're not going to get housing benefit out of me. In other words, they're not going to earn any money. Okay, it's all about the money. Of course it is. So, for, for like someone I said, like you, yeah, go I mean, so have none of the charities like tried to house you or get you? Oh, yeah, they have, yeah, yeah. What um, happened then? Um, I don't know if you've heard of a. Organisation called NACRO, N-A-C-R-O. They help uh, ex-prisoners and people with um, uh, mental issues, like, yeah. like myself. I mean, I've never been in prison. Yeah. Touch wood. Because the depression, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and they help, but they go so far, and then they don't help you anymore. And when was the last time you slept in a proper bedroom? Uh, July last year. Oh, year. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. What's the nice? That's what you can do. Yeah. Get me a bathroom for, for a B and B. What's the, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna try and do that. What's the nicest thing someone has done for you? Oh my word! There's been so many um, good things that have happened to me. Uh, any nicest one thing that stands out. Uh, right, there's a woman embarking here right now. And people said to me, if you ever bump into her, I'm not going to say her name, but if, if you ever bump into her, she'll help you out. <clears throat> if, she, if she likes you. All right. right. She obviously likes you. Sorry. Yeah, so within half an hour, we clicked. As in, not romantically, nothing like that, but we clicked. And she's been very, very kind to me. Thank you. In what ways, um, I mean, has she been kind to you? Like what? Uh, as in stopping me being beaten up, uh, helping me with, introducing me to other homeless people, um, gave me this, and most importantly, friendship. And what would you say in the six years of being homeless say is the meanest thing someone has done to you? The meanest? Yeah, all right. <clears throat> uh, I was badly beaten up. Uh, my legs were nearly broken. My face was out here. This was not here. This was in South End on Sea, uh, because uh, I was just walking. I, I said the wrong thing to somebody, and he was a policeman. Oh, no, so a policeman beat you? Yeah, he wasn't in uniform, obviously. Yeah. And it turns out his nickname is the Steroid Monster. Oh. And no, I'm not making this up. Uh, it's all on police file. If official police photographs, yeah. if you want to look it up or whatever. Uh, uh, I felt I lost the sight and my left eye because of that. And uh, what's the one lesson that you've learned being on the streets? Um, if you treat people with respect, you'll get it back. If you trust people, you'll get it back. But never lend money. And uh, what's, if you had one wish, what would your one wish be, Richard? See my dad again. Uh, my granddad as well. And my son. All boys. <laughs> Have your family back? Mm, yeah, only for about 10 minutes. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. What, what gets you through the tough times? people, talking, um, companionship, it's just a, you know, if it, and also, I'm going to have to say this, you women out there, if it weren't for you lot, giving me food, talk, I wouldn't be here, women help. I thought Always. you were going to say, if it weren't for you, love would have been homeless. Yeah, no, 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 no. Hey, <laughs> okay, I'm not, listen, couple, three yeah, years ago, I would have been like, ooh, bitter yeah. and twisted. But no, you move on. Yeah. You've got to always look on the positive 
side of things. Uh, I move around every three or four months. Um, I've been up to Clacton on Sea. Uh, no, it's a long story, but once again, a woman, two women, Kelly, hello, if you're looking at this, um, have come to my help, put me up, you know, for a few days. God knows why. I'm a pain in the bum sometimes. And you know, um, if you could go back, is there anything that you would want to change? Any event that happened to you or anything? The first time I drank alcohol. It's the worst drug in people have said the that. world. Everybody goes on about heroin, cocaine, uh, weed, whatever, alcohol. I wish I, but 45 years of drinking it, it's in my DNA. It's, it's you know, I'm, uh, they call it alcohol dependent now. Okay. I call it an alky, <laughs> you know. And um, people that walk past you, what kind of kind gestures do you appreciate that they do? Like, Stop and talk to me. That's the big thing. Yeah, at my age, and been doing, I do this solo. Uh, I mix with a lot of people, but people stop and talk to me. All right, it's nice they give me food, money, uh, water. I appreciate that. But it's good that people just stop and talk to me and realise I'm still a human being. Yeah. And you know, people that are going to watch this message, you know, there's people from all over the world, really. What yeah. would your final message be to mankind, to humanity? What would you want them to know? When, uh, <clears throat> when the, if you're in trouble or when a, something is not going right, stop, sit down, and talk. Don't do violence or anything like that. Stop sit and talk. When the SHIT hits the fan, stop and talk. Or, I don't know, no, that's it. That's it. Um, okay, and uh, if, there, if there was one thing we could do for you now that would put a smile on your face, what would that one thing be? Um, you've done it by this. Thank you for talking to me. I don't, I'm not one of these uh, people who think, oh, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be here. I'm not one of those people. It is what it is. I've had some, you know, I'm, I'm only six, 60, nearly. I'm only 60. <laughs> um, you know, you think of the people who have died, it's such a, you know, people say, oh, all the rock stars and uh, celebrities who died at the age of 27 and that. It's no age, is it? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get that Tesco gift card for you. So for the next... Well, if you could put it, get me into a hotel. All right, so you can help us with that. I saw you the first time. I couldn't interview you, but we gave you the pillows and yeah, the care pack. Did, yeah. did the care pack help? Yes. Yeah? yeah. So this is something that we do for the homeless. It's something little that we can do. I'm also going to give you this uh, phone with the oh, SIM. Thank okay. you. And my name and number is on the back. So once you okay. put the SIM in there, just um, I'll call you. In fact, yeah, or you can call me. My number's there. Okay. Um, is it charged up. The, it's charged up already, but oh, there's a okay. charger in there as well. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right now we have another person we need to see. Yeah, let me just get this. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is we're going to come back and um, we're going to book you uh, that bed and breakfast oh, that you're saying you. uh, in Barking. Uh, no worries. So, um, and you know people that donate money to us, yeah? They actually donate, uh, people from all over the world. With the money, we buy things like this hotel, for hotel yeah, phones, yeah. care packs. What's your message to people that donate money to the homeless and to help them? Thank you so much, all right, uh, for helping the homeless, the rough sleepers, the proper homeless, because, um, even it's only for 24 hours or whatever, you're giving me security because I can lock that bedroom door and not have to worry about, I'm getting on a bit, not have to worry about being attacked and being uh, hungry. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you, bro. God bless you.